All right, so I'm taking old Pablo for a walk. I just posted this to my uh, email subscribers and on my website as well. Uh, Social Security and Medicare colas. Now, I did a, uh, a video on this yesterday uh, where I talked about a guy, a financial advisor, who said he used real numbers as opposed to uh, projected numbers, and I, uh, I kind of chuckled that. Uh, but I want to follow up on that because I got a lot of comments like, how are you getting the uh, colas and, and things of that nature? So I'm just going to read you a little bit of the uh, what I posted this morning. Uh, consistency needed in COLA projections. And again, COLA is your cost of living allowance or cost of living adjustment. It's basically the rate of inflation, if you will. All right. And I say here, before I get started, I want to let you know that every Wednesday at noon Eastern time, my man Amar Shaw from uh, Client First Capital uh, in San Diego and I will be discussing investments primarily and anything else financial planning related. But generally speaking, we'll have a focus on investments. Uh, later on today, we're going to talk about uh, the, not a backdoor Roth per se, but uh, the mega Roth. Pretty interesting. There's a good article in Forbes we're going to refer to, which, uh, which uh, I, I, I learned myself from that. Anyway. I can't begin to tell you how many people scoff at my COLA projections for Social Security. I use the trustees report from their intermediate assumptions, which is 2.6% on average for the next 75 years. Now, I want to point out again is that there are three different uh, assumptions or models that SSA uses and CMS. CMS is Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. SSA is the Social Security Administration. The models use an intermediate, a low cost, and a high cost. All right, so the intermediate is the middle of the road. The low cost is the more optimistic, and the high cost is less optimistic. And so, uh, so I'm using the intermediate because that's what the Social Security trustees do when they report back to Social Security won't be solvent and such and such and whatnot. So we're going to use the intermediate approach. I have issues with the intermediate because I think it assumes uh, a much higher uh, unemployment rate than we have or we will have going forward. And if we look at Japan as a model, uh, the unemployment is uh, is quite low. All right. And the interest rates are quite low. And the interest rates in the intermediate assumptions are high or at least much higher than they are now. So some people say, well, that just means they, there's a, they offset each other. Low unemployment with low interest rates. And, and I, I don't think so. I don't think so. And I haven't done the calculations. I don't know this to be factual, but it inherently makes sense. If you have trillions of dollars in the quote unquote trust fund and you were expecting to get, we'll just say a 3% interest rate off that each and every year, that will make your, your trust fund much more solvent than if, if you have trillions and trillions of dollars in the trust fund and you're only getting 2%, right? So the intermediate report assumes a higher interest rate. That is interest they're receiving, uh, which goes in the system. But come 2034, there is not enough money in the trust fund left over. It's only going to be based on income from employers, employees, I should say, workers. So because of that, the interest rate in the trust fund is not very, uh, it doesn't mean that whole much sense because there is no money for which it can draw interest. If the trust fund is depleted, the all you can have a million percent interest rate, but it won't mean anything because there's no money for it to make money on, if that makes sense. Now, I mean, I mean, I'm sure they keep some money, uh, you know, they get, I don't know, a billion dollars every paycheck of income. They're, pay, you know, spending, you know, 900 million. So they get an extra 100 million that is sitting there receiving interest for, you know, the, until the next paycheck. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a little bit of interest income that they're going to get. But at the end of the day, it's not to the extent at all as having trillions of dollars in a trust fund that's earning 3% as opposed to 2 Hope that makes sense. All right. So the intermediate report assessment says 2.6 cost of living adjustments starting in 2027 and going to 2094. It's basically a 75 year projection. That's what they use, and they're saying they're going to they expect a 75. Ooh, hold on a sec, buddy. Oop, come here. They're expecting uh, uh, a two uh, 2.6 percent cost of living adjustment. Now, I've said this a million times on Sunday, and I'll say it again here. We don't know if that's going to be uh, correct or not, but it's what we're going to use, and the reason is because that's what the trustees say. Hold on just a second. Got to get Pablo's harness on because he escaped from me here. Hold on just a second. There we go. All right. So if the trustees are saying that, I'm using that. All right. So I, I don't, I mean, I'll, I'll probably have to say this to a blue in the face and I don't mind doing that because I know people need to know for confidence why I'm using a 2.6% cola. All right. Some folks dispute this. All right. Uh, 
they'll say, I had a financial advisor comment on my channel on a video I did the other day where he is using a 1.3% uh, COLA, and, I, and he's using that because it's based on, quote, real, unquote, numbers. And I said, huh, that's interesting. If you're only using real numbers, those based on the past, the 1.3% is what he said over the last 10 years, well, what are you using for projected Medicare increases? And, of course, he didn't respond to that. No, I think I know why, and I hate to attribute uh, <laughs> being nefarious versus ignorance. I don't know, but I've been in this business a long time, and uh, it's a whole lot easier to uh, make money when you're scaring people that they could die tomorrow, and you better buy a life insurance policy or that they're going to run out of money because Social Security cost of living isn't very high, and yet the health expenses are quite high. And so because of that, you can say, you better invest more and invest with me. So if you're going to go by what the last 10 years for Social Security cost of living adjustments are, is that not then logical to go by the last 10 years are for Medicare premium increases as well? And if we use the last 10 years for Medicare Part B premium, you get 3.1% average annual increase. Shoot, if you go back 30 years, Medicare Part B increases have also averaged just over 3%. Now, you may be asking why I'm ignoring Part D. Well, that's because Part D just came to being in 2006, but I won't change the calculations. The, accre the, the increases percentage-wise affect Part B and Part D simultaneously. Yet, uh, uh, even more interesting is that Social Security COLAs and Medicare COLAs do not travel in tandem. They're not correlated. In 2020, for instance, it looks like Social Security COLA will be about 1.6%. But it appears the Medicare Part B premiums will go up by $8, which is a 5.9% bump. Yet last year, Medicare Part B went up all the $1.50, which is a 1.1% increase, whereas Social Security COLA was up almost three. In fact, if you look at the numbers for each, you see there's absolutely no correlation between the two. I did a video and I talked about the video I did here yesterday on this. In fact, here are the past actual premium increases and projected increases by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS Trustees Report in 2019. This is on page 95. And what you'll see is, and this is what I refer back to, and going to 2019, they're estimating 3.7%, 2020, 3.5%. And if you go down to 2000, uh, let's see, 2030, 4.37%. 2065.03 and 2085.5.33. So you can see what their, their reporting is, that they expect higher and higher increases as more and more people get older and less and less people are paying into the system. My issue is that we should take the actual rates from both the CMS and the SSA trusted report using their intermediate models and go with that. That is the best we have. Your assumptions, Mr. Financial Advisor, are built on sand. This would be no different than a car tinkerer in his garage thinking he can improve an engine that Toyota engineers have built. It's not going to happen. Those engineers know, <laughs> they know the back and forth of an engine better than any guy who just tinkers with vehicles on his part time. What I think happens with many of the financial advisory business, they will continue to discount COLAs for Social Security, all the while using high COLAs for healthcare expenses. They'll throw studies around that say you need $300,000 for health expenses in retirement, all the while you're only looking at a total portfolio that you have about $170,000. And you're going to be thinking, I can never retire. And that's the point. They want you to think that, so you invest more money uh, with them and stay working your crappy old job with them. It's all generated ready to scare you. Mind you, I, cr I can create any report with your current financial situation to show that you'll be destitute and eating cat food or that you'll be living like Bill Gates. I use the exact same numbers you currently have to show either. All I need to do is a tweak over here and one over there and voila, you're broke or you're rich. Whatever I need the report to say, I can make happen. But that reporting is not based on sound logic. And that's the problem here. If you're only using information you're pulling out of the air because of your gut feeling, there's no logic behind that. And if your gut feeling changes six months from now, how can you do financial planning on your gut feeling? That's not financial planning, that's speculation. My point here is that consistency is needed in one's projections. This is like the climate science alarmists when they use different start years to represent different cat catastrophes. We'll ignore the medieval warm period, for instance, or we'll ignore the mass amount of cooling that happened in the middle of the 20th century and instead use our start year in 1979 to start at a very low point and thus show significant warming. Very convenient if you want to establish a narrative. No different than showing your investment portfolio starting in 2009. You'll look like a genius. 
By the way, and I talked about how I had the hour-long uh, interview with Michelle Sterling from Friends of Science yesterday, where we talk about the moneyed interest pushing the client crisis scaremongering. It's all about the green for these people. And by green, I mean the dollar bill, not the environment. Oh, well. I'm sure I'll lose subscribers because of this. Don't care. The whole reason I started my business, my YouTube channel, my blog, and this newsletter is to fight back against fear mongers. Mainly in finance, but wherever we can find them. And you always got to remember, my friends, you live in the most abundance the world has ever seen. Not to recognize that, to be humbled actually by your luck, and if you're a Christian at least, get on your knees and thank the Lord is to be irrational. If you are dredging to work, again, because your advisor or some software you found online says you can't retire until you have XYZ saved up, ask him, what are your assumptions? Why are you assuming this? Are they consistent? If he hems and haws, well, I'll leave that for you to decide if that's a person you want to continue to work with. But just remember, the world has never been better. Enjoy it, for heaven's sake. And I, uh, from the bottom of my heart, enjoy it. We are living in the best age. I mean, it's nuts. It's nuts how good we have it. And yet, that's the thing with humanity. We always have to find a crisis. And the, the crisis be it retirement, the crisis being climate change, the crisis be it terrorism and all this. It's just sad how, how much we have to uh, create and uh, allow us to live in fear. And look, I'm not saying be irrationally exuberant, but I am saying just look and be common sense. Why is a guy, financial advisor, using a high Medicare slash healthcare expense because of projections that he's saying, well, that's what they project, but then he's only going to use a low social security cost of living adjustment because that's based on the past 10 years. It's completely inconsistent and should not be allowed. All right, we'll see you.